Hello, Craig Howard here again this morning, sitting out on my deck, got my glass of iced tea, just enjoying, enjoying this time out here while I still am able to do it. I came out this morning and there was yellow tree, yellow leaves, yeah, yellow trees, yellow leaves in the trees, uh, in some of the trees, some of the locust trees, and I thought, boy, you know, it's fall is just around the corner. And while I love the beauty of fall, I love driving along. I love to see the all the the color in the in the trees, and it hasn't happened yet. Um, but I look forward to seeing that. I know that right behind it comes winter. And uh, I'm not a big fan of winter anymore. I used to love winter. I used to love looking forward to going up on the mountain and going skiing. And I still kind of enjoy that, but not as much as I used to. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, it just, it just reminded me as I thought about all the different seasons that are coming along and how, how, you know, there's nothing we can do to stop them. They're going to come. It's going to be fall and then it's going to be winter and then it's going to be spring and then it's going to be summer. And, and each, each season comes along and we can't stop them. We embrace them. We take what is good out of each one and we can either complain about them or we can just celebrate it and say, okay, this is something that God has made available in my life. But it's amazing how many times there are other seasons in our lives there are other things that come along in our lives and rather than embracing those and saying here's another season that God has given me another thing that God has given me to to enjoy or endure um, it's amazing how often we just will uh, rail against that the Bible says over in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 it says to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven Every single thing that we do, God says, I've got, I've got it timed out. I've got a purpose. I've got a plan. And uh, it doesn't just happen haphazardly, but there's a purpose behind it. There's my timing. God's timing is behind it. And we can either look at that event and we can rail against it and we can develop a bad attitude towards it, maybe even develop bitterness towards God over it. Or we can say, okay, God's got a reason for bringing this about, for allowing this to happen in my life. It goes on to say, after it says, uh, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under the heaven. Then it goes through a list of things, and I just want to read it. It says, a time to be born and a time to die. We always acknowledge that, even though none of us ever want our loved ones to go. Um, it's, it's part of our lives. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. Uh, sometimes we have to go through that. I just cleaned out my shed not too long ago, and and it was time to throw a whole bunch of stuff away. Uh, but sometimes we struggle with that, e even that. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. You say, is there ever a time that it's right to hate? Well, yeah. Not to hate an individual, but I can see somebody whose life is being destroyed by sin, and I can hate the sin that is destroying that life. Um, I can see a situation where somebody is being treated unjustly, and I can hate the way they're being mistreated. I can see a situation where people are in need and starving, and, and I've seen that in, in various parts of the world. I've even seen that in our own country. I've even seen that in, in, in our own little town here of Petersburg, where people had to go without uh, basic necessities just because they just couldn't afford to have it. And yeah, it's, it's okay to hate those situations and hate those, those, uh, those things in their, in, in, that are going on in life. Doesn't mean that I hate the individual. Um, I don't think it's ever appropriate to hate an individual, but you know, God says there's even a time that it's right for you to hate, just as there's a time for you to love. 
to love a person, to love a new baby, to love something wonderful that happened in your life. Um, there's a time for all those things. And as we go through these situations in our life, we can either embrace God's timing. It's hard for me to see my time. Okay. We can either embrace God's timing and we can say, okay, God, you've got a purpose for bringing this into my life. You've got a purpose for, for this event taking place. I've had a lot of elderly people over the years that have looked at me and said, I don't know why God doesn't just let me go home. I don't know why God doesn't just take me home and, and, uh, you know, why I have to endure this situation. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to understand when you're, when you're bedridden and, and you know, you can't get out of bed, you can't go do the things that you want to do. And you think, God, why don't you just take me home? I'm, I'm, I'm unhappy. I'm miserable. But, you know, I've met people who have embraced their situation, even though it was a difficult situation. And I have seen them literally change people's lives. Um, I remember there was a lady when I was just a little boy that my dad used to take us to go see. Her name was Ruth French. And Ruth was bedfast. I'm not sure anymore what it was that was wrong with her. She was all crippled up. She was bed fast. But when you would go visit Ruth, she had such a, a, a wonderful spirit about her. And she, you would, you would leave there encouraged because she had this amazing spirit. She embraced the fact that, yes, I know, you know, my life is going to be spent in this bed, but I'm going to do what I can to be a blessing to others. And, and if I remember right, she would have a pen or pencil. She would have the, the nurses strap a pen or pencil into her hand and because she couldn't hold it. Her hands were too crippled up, but they would somehow fix the pencil into her hand and she would write letters to people, letters of encouragement, letters of blessing. She could have just moaned and complained and said, why can't I be the healthy person that I was when I was a young person? But she said, this is the season of my life. This is the season that I'm in. And God has blessed me with people in my life and opportunities in my life still. And I'm going to embrace those and I'm going to make something of those. And Ruth became such an encouragement and such a blessing, not just to, uh, to my dad who would go and visit her, but he would take all of us. He would take the whole family to go see Ruth. And she would just go on about us kids and she would just be such a a pleasure to go see. And maybe it was different when dad just went by himself. I don't know. But she was like, okay, this is the season of my life. You know, my dad's birthday was yesterday. He turned 89 years old yesterday. Um, happy birthday, dad. Uh, but this is a different season in my dad's life. Uh, he's not able to do all the things that he used to do. Dad's still in relatively good health. He just recently uh, took a train, jumped on a train from Philadelphia to, to Johnstown and, and went to see his brother in Johnstown. So, I mean, he's still in pretty good health. Uh, he can still drive and still do a lot of things. And, and uh, but, but he can't, you know, when it comes to, to getting out and doing a hard day's work, uh, he can't do that anymore. But you know, my dad could sit around and complain and say, oh, look at what I can't do. But I haven't heard him do that. I know there's times he gets discouraged when my brother Jeff is working on something and dad would like to help him out and, and he can't do it. But he, by and large, dad, dad and mom both. They're both 89 years old and, and, and they're, for the most part, pretty joyful and pretty blessed and pretty thankful for the blessings in their life. And it's such an encouragement to me uh, to see that. He's saying, this is the season of my life. And I'm going to embrace this season. I'm going to, God has a reason for placing me in this season. He's got a purpose. He's got something he wants to accomplish through me. And I'm just going to embrace it and make the most of it. You know, that's, some, that's a choice we all have to make. You have to make that choice today. I have to make that choice today. As, I'm, as you're at work or as you're around people, do I embrace this 
Or do I just say, God, I don't like this. This is miserable. Why do you why are you making me go through this? I tell I want to tell you this morning, if you'll embrace the season that God has placed you in right now, you'll find You'll find blessing in it, excuse me. You'll find blessing in it. You'll find joy in it. And you'll be thankful for this season of your life. Well, I need to go. I pray you're just going to have a great day today. God bless you in all that you do. And I will see you, Lord willing, I will see you tomorrow. Take care now. Goodbye.